how to list an item on eBay through worthpoint.com. Welcome. Hi, everybody. I'm Dana Crawford. I am the strategic director at WorthPoint, and I'm also the founder of powersellingmom.com. Today, we're going to list an item on eBay through WorthPoint, and I'm going to start with Snoopy. I am an eBay consignment seller, and I had a client bring me a tub full of Snoopy mugs, so I decided to start with this. This is my current Snoopy mug that we're going to list today, and you can see the front and the back of it in this photo. It says, I hate it when it snows on my French toast. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're going to do before we start is to research using the price guide or also known as the Worthopedia. So when you click on price guide, or you can actually search from the search bar as soon as you see it on, on WorthPoint. And either way, it'll bring you to the price guide also known as the Worthopedia, where over 520 million prices realize from 350 plus data sources. So we would start by typing in, I'm gonna do a basic search for Snoopy mug, because you always research before you list. And then I can adjust the categories if I choose to. I can just go to the glass area, or I can search all of all categories, all of WorthPoint, and then click search for your item. Now, just the word Snoopy mug produced 36,202 results. Wow, that is a lot of Snoopy mugs. So you can see they vary in prices. Some are more than one, some are multiples. I can also adjust my search to high to low. Show me the money, show me the highest price ones. This is something that I love to do. I can, I can research and learn by adjusting my sort. When you adjust it to the highest price to the lowest price, now we can see the first set was a lot of 25 mugs sold for $1,695 in 2015. The advantage of researching like this is about education. The more that you research, the more that you learn. And when I was doing my research on Snoopy mugs, I discovered that people were making a lot of money when they put them in, in bulk. So I'm keeping a box ready of Snoopy mugs that are not valuable on their own to put in a box lot. Now I'm gonna change my search up. This time I'm gonna put in my search Snoopy mug snows French toast. Now that makes no sense, right? But those are some keywords that are from the mug. There's no need for me to put all of the words. I hate it when it snows on my French toast. I don't need to put all of those words. I just want to take a look at the search on those words. So we can see the one at the top. It looked like they listed it twice or maybe it's a duplicate listing or something. Or maybe they had a second one and they sold them right away. But it sold for $97.50 in 2018. When we click on that, we can go in and take a look. And now we see their title. They had snow on Snoopy's French toast, or French toast milk glass mug, United Future Syndicate 1958. That was their title. I think I could have a better title than that, but <laughs> we can click on sell similar item on eBay. So the first step, you can see this chart on the left. Choose your category, describe your item, add a description, add photo, item specifics, other details, payment methods, shipping details, and listing format. We're starting with choosing our category. Now this has a slide bar off to the right, so it's not, um, it'll show you even more categories when you slide that down. And then we can go down and now I see collectibles. Now the reason I know to look in collectibles is because my research shows that the this was the most common category that people used. 
So when you're researching, you're also learning about keywords and you're learning about what category was the most successful. You want to follow success. If you want to be successful, follow success. Collectibles, and then we they 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 burst out into subcategories. So we have collectibles, animal art and characters, animation characters, peanuts, and coffee mugs. I have my category. I'm ready to list. Next would be the title and the condition and the description. So let's start. I, I actually put together um, a title. I put in, well, they're Fire King, Milk Glass, Snoopy. Personally, this is just my personal preference. I like to have some caps and some lowercase. Now I put in my title and I also like to point out that when you list an item on eBay, you do right now, as of today, they allow 80 characters in that title. Take advantage of that real estate. Every word is a piece of bait that goes on a hook out to the eBay C. Every word will help increase your odds for a sale. Then you want to put in the condition. Now this is not the description. This is just a simple condition of your item. This is where you would put in any flaws, any dents or dings or, or broken items or stains. You would put in this box, the condition box. eBay will protect you if you have a return or a complaint that was posted in here and you clearly let your customer know, then eBay will protect you. The condition, is it new or is it used? Subtitle, I usually skip. eBay charges an extra fee for subtitle. I don't generally um, go with that. The only exception to a subtitle is if I'm doing a charity auction, like for hospice or uh, on special nonprofit that I want to get extra words in there. But the subtitle, last time I checked, was not searchable. Then just click next steps. And now we're gonna scroll down a little bit and we're gonna add the description. I just put in Snoopy Mug Reads, I hate it when it snows on my French toast. 1958 United Feature Syndicate. Schultz Bottom has classic stamp. Fire King, Anchor Hawking, made in the USA. White milk glass measuring about four inches tall. Clean, gently used from a smoke-free home. Photos show all. Note, I have more mugs listed and happy to combine shipping. Now, this is where you want to be clear on your description. You want to keep it short, sweet, to the point. You don't need too much information in there. And once you've finished off, you can also make some items bold or um, in different colors. I just like to go with black and white most of the time. Next step, now we're going to add the photos. We're working our way down the list. And adding photos is as simple as clicking on that and then it'll bring up the photos from your computer. So you would just highlight if you're at a desktop. For those of you that are using this on your smart device, you would actually you could actually take your photos and upload them directly that way. Or what I did was I took them ahead of time and I emailed them to myself and then I um, uploaded them this way. And then it'll pull in the photos and you have a few options. You can rotate, you can zoom in, you can delete. Right now it doesn't allow us to brighten but hopefully that feature is coming soon where we will have more options with our editing. However, keep in mind that once your item is on eBay, you can log into eBay and use their photo editing if desired as well. And then just simply save it. And then you're gonna go to the item specifics. Now, as an experienced eBay seller, we know how important item specifics are. WorthPoint has the tools for you to add your own item specifics and then you can just kind of work yourself through the list. Modified item, is has it been modified? Has anybody um, modified this mug? No. 
manufacturer, what country was it made in? Okay, it was made in the United States. It clearly says USA. Do not guess. If you do not know where your item was made, please mark it unknown. If it was made in China, put China. Whatever country it was made in, that's important. And the California Prop 65 warning. What is that, right? Well, I pulled it up for us so that everybody can see. California Prop 65 warning field. California Proposition 65 requires businesses to provide warnings to Californians about significant exposure to chemicals that cause cancer, birth defects, or other reproductive harm. Add details about the warning you want to show California buyers. We'll add a warning symbol and the word warning before the description you enter here and we'll add for more information go to www.p65warnings.ca.gov follow, following your description. That's what that means. <laughs> so, I've, I don't think I've ever used that but it's there for those that need it. And then what kind of material is your item made out of and mine is glass. Next, has the item been modified? No, it's from the United States, it's glass, I've got all that filled out, and then next step. Now we've got other details, buyer requirements. Use buyer requirements to block certain buyers if you need to do that. I usually just leave this be. And then uh, return policy, everybody needs a returns. I have returns will not be accepted. Do you accept returns? Yes or no. And then next step, very straightforward. Now we're at the payment methods. See how fast this goes. The payment methods, the most general is PayPal. You just put in your PayPal email. That's mine, D-A-N-N-A -N -N -A at powersellingmom.com. If you want to send me money, there you go. <laughs> You can scroll down and then if you're going to add Visa or MasterCard, American Express, Discover, go ahead and check those off. Why not? Because they can do that through PayPal. Other payment methods are pay on pickup. I don't mind if somebody's in the neighborhood and they want to come by and pay me cash. I don't mind. So you can have that as an option. Shipping type, USA shipping. These have drop downs at the end of each um, line. So you'll be able to see the, those there. When you click on them, a drop down will appear and then you just choose my shipping type, either flat, same cost to all buyers, or I'm gonna have calculated, which means I'm gonna put in the weight and the measurements, or I'm gonna have no shipping and I'm gonna have local pickup only. Side note, I personally don't recommend only choosing local pickup only because it actually will keep you out of search. People don't mind traveling. I live in Florida. They don't mind coming from Georgia to pick up a go-kart or pick up a table. I love selling furniture when I have it. So you never want to put local pickup only because it'll miss out on opportunity for a sale. More exposure. So you choose which one works for you and then you're going to have your handling to, or your service provider. Most common is the USPS. If it'll fit in a priority package, you can choose that package. You can also choose first class. If it's under a pound, generally first class shipping is the norm. If it's over a pound, then priority mail. And if it's over three, if it's over like six to, I don't know, eight pounds or more, then I'm gonna go with FedEx. Shipping details included, number of days. The most attractive is same business day. Now that means if a person buys and if a person buys your item that day, then you ship it that day. However, the system will allow you to choose a cutoff time. I believe my cutoff time is 11 a.m. So if they buy it at three in the afternoon or they pay at three in the afternoon, I do not have to ship it that day. She, same day shipping is very attractive to buyers and I do recommend it, but you do have to make sure you are able to ship according to whatever term you choose because you will get strikes on your eBay account if you don't live up to your promise. International shipping, yes or no. 
I suggest say no for brand new buyer, brand new sellers. However, when you are on eBay, you can opt into the global shipping program. Say yes to the global shipping program. And once you are once you have the global shipping program set up, you can always choose yes to international shipping. And then your item will show up in over a hundred countries around the world, but your job will only be to ship it to Kentucky. eBay has a fulfillment center that um, handles all of it for you. And you still just pay shipping to Kentucky and you don't have to fill out any customs forms. Packaging detail, package or thick envelope is the normal one to select. Package type, um, sorry, I had arrows there. Make sure that you put in the weight and the measurements of your package. You're gonna need a good shipping scale and measuring tape. The normal one that I use for coffee mugs is seven by seven by six. It's a free priority mail box. You can order on online at usps.com and they're perfect for shipping coffee mugs in and wrap them in bubble wrap first, of course, and then put them securely in the box. And I know from experience they weigh about two pounds. Next, we have the final spot, which is which country is your item located in? What is your zip code and your city and state? This is all very important. And finally, once all of that is in place, you have the next step, which is the listing format. Are we gonna have an auction? Are we gonna have a fixed price? How are we gonna list this item? What is our starting price if it's an auction or if it's fixed price? And we know how we're gonna list it because we just did a bunch of research. And so based on our research, we're gonna list it according to that. We also have the choice to either schedule it to start later or to start immediately. We can schedule it to start the next day or up to several months, I believe. Now on this particular item, I listed it at a fixed price of $65, good till canceled, best offers are accepted, and I also use automatically accept or automatically decline anything lower than $34.99 and automatically accept, accept anything higher than $34.99. I like to get rid of stuff. I don't like sitting on them too long, but I thought 65 was a very fair price to try to move it quickly and still make some money. And then you can, um, once that's all in place, oh, and then your duration is good till canceled. And then just work your way down the list and then now you've got the listing format continued, select your time, and then simply click on estimate listing price. And what happens when you click that, it'll show you what eBay is going to charge. So everything looks good. Your total fee estimation for your eBay listing is 10 cents. Now I have an eBay store and I, if I do an auction, it's, it would be free. So it may say that it's going to be 10 cents, but I know because of what kind of account I have, it'll actually be free. So these are the kinds of things to keep in mind. And also if there's any errors, they would be shown on this page as well for you to go back and correct. So nothing's, nothing's in stone until you click on list your item. And then that's when it actually goes live. Then you'll see a congrats sign. You basically listed your item on, you successfully, you successfully listed your item on eBay. View your item on eBay. You can also view your listed items here. Now, if you click here, It'll actually bring you back to your worth point page. Now you have a little area on your worth point account that says my listed items. And you can stop in here anytime and take a look 
at your listed items and then click on the item. The words are clickable and now it'll bring you right to eBay. This is my eBay ID and it'll show you the listing is live on my eBay account. Now I can come in here and adjust what I need to if I need to. Like I actually changed my shipping to $8 and I went with just standard shipping. All I had to do was come in here and click on revise your item. And then now you can go in and change anything until someone bids or makes an offer, you can go change your item. So thank you very much. I'm going to close this and open up for Q&A right now. Uh, if you want if you want to send me an email, it's danna.crawford at worthpoint.com. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Or if you need any assistance, I'd be happy to do a private one-on-one -on -one webinar with you. I hope that you can join me on a future webinar. Meanwhile, thank you again for joining me and happy eBay selling.